This video was released one day early for my Patreon patrons. Link in the description. Hello everybody and welcome to ChatGPT Makes a Horror Game. If you remember last episode, we made the game development document. Well, today we're really gonna hammer in on making sure this story is nice and robust. We have an understanding of what the world is, who our characters are, all that stuff. Now here's the thing, I'm not very good at coming up with stories and stuff. I mean, I'm not bad at it, but I'm not someone that's very good at it. However, due to the nature of the entire series, I know someone we can ask. I'd love to get our story a bit more flushed out. We know it takes place in a asylum. We have ideas for the enemies and roughly what our main character is about. However, let's solidify those characters. How should we get started? For the record, I thought in the last episode, the AI voice kind of overstayed its welcome. So instead, I'm going to kind of TLDR these as we go forward. It wants us to start by identifying the main characters, uh, brainstorm their backstory and motivations, develop their personalities, uh, give them a physical appearance, and consider if they have unique abilities and weaknesses. Well, let's start, oh, I misspelled start, with part one. Let's see what it gives us with that. ChatGPT is putting words in my mouth and I love it because it doesn't realize that it's the one that came up with all of this because if you look at what it just said, it says, for your game, it sounds like the protagonist will be a journalist investigating the abandoned asylum. Then it specified that I mentioned that they have a backstory of being a former patient. Then if we take a look at the antagonist, it says, you mentioned that the enemies will be former patients who have been mutated by the experiments carried out in the asylum. I don't know if I find that charming or creepy, but honestly, I want ChatGPT to do better because it's again making more game news reporter. Outlast. <laughs> Let's try something new with the main character. Let's consider other possible jobs or reasons he may be there. A historian or archeologist, a paranormal investigator, a ghost hunter, a private detective, a patient's family member looking for information. I actually like all of those, but there's something that really sticks out to me and it's the archeologist because we could add artifacts and then those artifacts could do things that could solve puzzles or be keys or just do cool stuff. So I think we go, I, I say we go with the archeologist. An archeologist would be super cool. ChatGPT's response does include something that's very important here. It says, additionally, you could incorporate the character's expertise in archaeology. So whenever you uh, have a character, like an archaeologist or something, whenever you're creating your story, it's important to understand how an archaeologist thinks, which means that you also have to research and, in, in a way, become a little archaeologist yourself um, in order to, one, make anything make sense, two, you can come up with neat ideas for the story. And three, if your character is an archeologist written by a not archeologist that knows nothing about archeology, span it will come through. And we don't want that. So it looks like we're gonna be learning about archeology span at one point. Okay, so we know that our main character is an archeologist. So why does the archeologist go to the asylum? Studying the history of mental health, is interested in uncovering artifacts and documents, the archaeologist is searching for a specific artifact, uh, or the archaeologist is following in the footsteps of a previous archaeologist who disappeared. Interesting. I kind of like either I, the bottom two, um, because we could be like, hey, we're looking for an artifact that is what caused the patients to lose their minds to begin with. Because, you know, hearing that and you're an archaeologist, you're probably like, we need to learn about that. We need access to that specific fossil fossil specific artifact whereas you could also do the same thing but we're looking for someone else that tried to do it like maybe it was our teacher or mentor so i've started documenting what it wanted over on our new document this is not in the gdd this is a specific one for the story um now we've got, and it's an archeologist and he's looking for a specific artifact or mentor or both at the same time. Let's get some information on maybe their name. Are they male or female? 
or non-binary. Good, good for you, ChatGPT. Um, you know what, ChatGPT? Pick a number between one and three, because something tells me they're not going to ever pick this unless we really mess with how we're wording it. So we're just gonna do pick a number between one and three, uh, one male, two female, three will do non-binary. Female, we have a female archeologist. Uh, so we want female and then what we'll do is, okay, can you give me some random uh, random fake female archaeologist names. Oh, I spelled it wrong. Of course I did. Dr. Lila Patal, Dr. Camelia Rodriguez, Dr. Elena Jones, Dr. Sarah... Mm -mm, I'm going to screw that up. Dr. Isabel Viga. If I messed any of those up, I apologize. I really like Dr. Elena Jones. It kind of sounds like almost like a play on Indiana Jones. Dr. Elena Jones, Dr. Indiana Jones. I really like it. Or Eleanor. Was I saying Elena? Eleanor. Okay, we got main character, Dr. Eleanor Jones, archaeologist looking for a specific artifact or mentor or both. Uh, and then we can we can get rid of female because now we just know by the name. What is an example backstory for Dr. Eleanor Jones, the archaeologist? Sometimes, by the way, when you're using ChatGPT, notice that I'm reiterating the context we already created. I will do this here and there to really re-season what it is exactly that we're doing. Because ChatGPT will kind of lose it sometimes. So remember, everything about ChatGPT and its usefulness is context. Continue to provide context, even if you have to reiterate yourself. That led her to eventually go into the asylum looking for a specific artifact i'm gonna leave out the mentor because maybe in this backstory the mentor will naturally be added let's find out dr eleanor jones was always fascinated by ancient artifacts and lost civilizations her parents were both archaeologists and from a young age she accompanied them on their expeditions around the world by the time she was in college, she was already an accomplished field researcher, spending summers excavating sites in Greece, Turkey, and Egypt. After completing her PhD in archaeology, Dr. Jones landed a coveted position as a curator at the Smithsonian. However, she never forgot the thrill of discovery and the excitement of being out in the field. She, so when she heard about a mysterious artifact that was said to be hidden in an abandoned asylum outside of a town, she couldn't resist the opportunity to investigate. As she delves deeper into the asylum, Dr. Jones starts to realize that there may be more to the artifact than she initially thought. The creepy atmosphere, the strange noises, and the mysterious whispers she hears at night all suggest that something supernatural is at play. As she uncovers the dark secrets of the asylum, Dr. Jones must use all of her skills and knowledge to survive and unravel the mysteries of the past. Ugh! ChatGPT, oh my god. Copy and paste. I do need to double check though, um, cause basically what I'm getting when I read this, and maybe it's just because her name is Eleanor Jones, is I'm scared that this first part is just Indiana Jones. I haven't watched Indiana Jones recently enough to know that if any of these de details are specifically that or not. Uh, so I'll look into that. So if you're screaming at your monitor, don't worry, I will check into that. Uh, but the second half, definitely not um, Indiana Jones. And I think what we need to do now to really expand on our uh, main character, Eleanor Jones here, is one, what is the artifact? Like, what is her impression of the artifact originally? Um, because I think that's going to help us understand her motive to go check in the first place. It seems like ChatGPT was kind of leaning on the fact that she misses that urge for exploration and learning, which is okay. Okay, but it's a pretty weak example that would drive someone to go to an asylum in a random location. 
I love it. What does Dr. Eleanor Jones know about the artifact leading up to her going to the asylum? Why is she so interested in finding it? Dr. Eleanor Jones had spent years researching ancient civilizations and their burial practices, and had come across references to an artifact that was said to possess immense power. It was said to have been buried with a powerful ruler in the ancient ruins of a city that was lost to time. And she continued her research, she began to piece together a map leading to the city's location, which is hilarious, and eventually discovered that the runes had been converted into an asylum asylum many years ago. Wow. Her interesting her interest in finding the artifact only grew stronger as she believed that it could hold the key to unlocking some of the greatest mysteries of ancient civilization. So this is the kind of information that makes sense that would drive her to do this. Um, but now we need to uncover what those great mysteries are. Also, my cogs are moving. Unfortunately, I can't use the, the, the juices that my cogs are producing because we're using ChatGPT, but I'm imagining a couple weird scenarios in the asylum whenever the player is going through where they come across like an indigenous people and they're like, what the fuck? I thought I was in an asylum. Why is this dude here like chanting or doing like a ritual or something? Uh, but that's up to ChatGPT. We'll see how it goes. And what was the greatest mystery of ancient civilization. Oh, hold on, before I press enter on that, I wanna add this, cause I think this is really relevant. So this is just kind of the outline for backstory. So let me do some formatting. There we go, that should help. Okay, and uh, what was the greatest mystery of ancient civilization? There were many mysteries surrounding ancient civilizations, but one of the most intriguing is the construction of megalithic structures such as Stonehenge, the Pyramids of Giza, and the Moi of Easter Island, which is those heads, right? Those like stone heads. Uh, the ancient feats of engineering and architecture continue to fascinate us today. We try to uncover the secrets of how they were built and what purposes they served. Other mysteries include the disappearance of civilizations such as the Mayans and the Indus Valley civilization and the enigmatic artifacts and symbols left behind by these cultures. So what I'm picking up from this, I don't know if we can use that whole block because that's just kind of being like, hey, this is a general idea of what these mysteries are. Um, I think what I'm getting from this is either the disappearance of civilizations, um, because maybe that's why everyone in the asylum went crazy and are no longer here because of whatever the artifact is, uh, and then unfortunately that got the entire civilization uh, in the past, or maybe something to do with like the pyramids of Giza, I hope I'm saying that correctly, because uh, there's just that weird fascination with pyramids. Like we all know somewhat what's inside of them, right? It's like real small tunnels, traps, and essentially a grave. Um, and then they hold, you know, potentially treasure uh, in them. But of course our brain also is like, well, what else is in there? Even though we know there's not a lot. So maybe there's something to do with the pyramids, but we can expand more on that stuff in a little bit. We have a ton of information here about Eleanor. So before we get off of just Eleanor, let's see if we can figure out some of her strengths and weaknesses. What are some strengths and weaknesses? Extensive knowledge of archaeology, good critical thinking, problem solving skills, resourceful and adaptive, uh, strong sense of determination and perseverance, and good physical endur endurance and fitness. I think that's perfect for a um, someone that has to survive a horror thing, so that's good. Tendency to get too focused on her work, sometimes at the expense of her personal life. I feel like we could actually use that as a character flaw of like... Every time she ends up finding an artifact or something interesting, something bad happens because she's too focused on it whenever she could have maybe stopped it, which could create some interesting character dynamics. Uh, overly cautious or hesitant to take risks. This might be hard to play with in a horror setting. We'll just have to see. Um, may have trouble working well in large groups or with people who don't share her level of expertise. Yeah. In theory, we could have a companion, maybe, and uh, she thinks down on him, and maybe by the end of it, he saves her life once or twice, and she kind of has character growth in that way. May have a fear of failure and not living up to expectations. 
maybe this is coming from her parents. So maybe this is one of the reasons that also motivated her. Like, you know, obviously this is a huge archeological find, but also because of that fear of failure or not living up to expectations, maybe this is her way of proving to herself and maybe even an attempt to prove to her parents that she's also a valid archeologist could potentially be too attached to the artifact she is searching for to the point of obsession. I think we could easily uh, put the first weakness and the final weakness together. I think this is really good. We're gonna copy paste this. So far, we literally only have Eleanor. Um, this might actually take a while. So let's actually focus now on the main antagonist. Um, and then we can fill in the gaps, right? Because it's kind of like two different ends. We got the hero and we got the antagonist. So let's get those foundations and then maybe fill in to the middle what could potential and what could potential main antagonists be in this game let's go ahead and correct that so looking at these uh, i see a demonic presence and then i also see a mad scientist i feel like we could actually combine those two um so that way it seems like it's just a mad scientist we find out it's a demonic presence um, however, the last one is also really interesting as well. A mysterious figure who is manipulating the archaeologists for their own purposes. Um, this could be really good too. Um, maybe we don't know how our archaeologist found out about the artifact and it turns out she found out about it because of the mysterious figure. So honestly, I think a mixture of three, four, and seven could work really well here. Or I'm sorry, three, two, three, and seven. Let's do a mixture of two, three, and seven. Okay, a mixture of two, three, and seven. Uh, it says a group of former patients who were experimented on and mutated. Okay, a malevolent spirit haunting the asylum, a secret society that wants to obtain the artifact. Wait, what? I'm, I'm actually really confused with this response. I don't know what it means. Let's have the main antagonist appear to be the mad scientist but actually he's being controlled by a demonic presence in the asylum that we slowly start to unveil as we play the game we also find out that we are being manipulated by a mysterious figure can you give me an example of that? As Dr. Eleanor Jones progresses through the asylum, she encounters the seemingly mad scientist who is conducting gruesome experiments on patients. At first, it appears that he is the main antagonist and responsible for the horrors happening in the asylum. However, as the story unfolds, it is revealed that he's being controlled by a demonic presence that has been trapped within the asylum for centuries. As Dr. Jones delves deeper into the mystery, she begins to uncover clues that suggest she is being manipulated by a mysterious figure. Uh who seems to be pulling the strings behind the scenes. It becomes clear that there are more, more at play than just the mad scientist and the demonic presence, and Dr. Jones must unravel the twisted web of secrets and lies to uncover the truth and survive the horrors that await her in the eerie asylum. So now we have a layered thing of antagonists, right? So it starts out, we have the doctor, which obviously we know is not going to be the main antagonist, um, but he's being controlled by a demon. And then we have another entity that we don't know if they're good or bad. Um, however, I think I'm running out of time on this episode. So please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll come back and we'll continue to unravel all the secrets so that way we can start to put together an actual prototype for what the game will be. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.